Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Elex is an open world RPG that came out in late 2017. It was developed by Piranha Bytes, a small studio with around 30 people, the same studio that created Gothic and Reason Trilogy. Piranha Bytes was acquired by THQ Nordic in 2019 and they recently released a playable teaser for the Gothic remake. After more than 180,000 people played this demo, THQ decided to officially announce that the remake of the first Gothic game is going to happen. This makes me really excited and worried at the same time, but that's not the topic for this video. Elex is definitely rough around the edges and it lacks polish in certain areas, which is to be expected in a game of this size made by a small team. This should not be used as an excuse for all the problems that the game has, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind. I personally didn't experience any game breaking bugs, just a couple of glitches here and there. Basically every game made by this small studio can be considered as highly ambitious because they are pushing the boundaries of what can be done on a small budget. But despite this, all games should be judged by the same criteria. What kind of experience the game is trying to deliver and how well it does it. Since the market for open world RPGs is really slow at the moment, you could consider trying out Elex for the first time or to revisit for another playthrough. I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to get some major info about Elex too soon, so this might be the perfect time to play Elex again. We're going to talk about the game in general and after the video is over, you should know if you want to play this game or not. If I would have to list the strongest features in this game, those would be the world design, exploration, character progression, quest design, player freedom, unique setting, the atmosphere and strong replayability. This can be said for almost all Piranha Bytes games in general. The world of Megalan is absolutely massive, with 5 different biomes to explore. A forest area called Eden, desert area called Tawar, snowy area called Zaykor, volcanic area called Ignadon and green area called Abessa. The design of the world is quite vertical and you'll take the full advantage of that because you have a jetpack. Exploring these areas with a jetpack is truly amazing because you'll have just enough fuel to reach that next cliff or land safely after a long descent. The whole world feels like it's carefully designed around jetpack exploration and this is actually really unique. I was really skeptical about the jetpack before the game released because I was afraid it's going to ruin the exploration. But I was wrong, it turns out to be completely the opposite. Exploration is rewarding and you'll find items all over the place. Better quality loot is usually well hidden and you should always keep your eyes open, especially in some unusual places on the map which are plenty. There are legendary items that you can find by just exploring the world, which is also really nice, although some of these items are underwhelming. The reason why I mentioned character progression as one of the strongest features in the game is actually really simple. It's actually one of the staples of Piranha Bytes games, you start off really weak and even a minor upgrade to your character will be quite noticeable. This creates a strong sense of character progression because almost everything you do in the game matters. The world feels really dangerous and you just have to avoid a lot of fights in the beginning because you won't stand a chance. It's still doable if you know what you're doing, you can kill tough monsters as a low level character with a lot of effort but it's actually not rewarding. And since a lot of people have problems with the combat system, I absolutely don't recommend playing like this. I actually made a lot of combat guides for Elex back in 2017, but we'll talk about the combat a bit later. As I was saying, killing tougher monsters or even some critters can be really challenging in the beginning. But it always feels really satisfying when you come back stronger and absolutely destroy them. It's one of the things that helps create a strong sense of character progression. When it comes to actual progression in terms of leveling and learning new abilities, this will largely depend on your choice of faction. Each of these three factions have unique abilities that you can learn. If you want to use laser rifles, plasma guns and some cool high tech spells, you need to join the clerics. If you prefer melee weapons and magic, you will join the berserkers and if all of that sounds stupid and you just want to steal, abuse drugs and kick the shit out of people, you'll join the outlaws. No matter which faction you choose, you will feel noticeably stronger when you manage to learn a couple of new abilities and get some better gear. I would prefer more unique abilities that are not connected to factions though, because you can spend a lot of hours exploring and doing quests all over the world without joining a faction. You have combat, crafting, personality and survival skills and they don't require you to join any faction in order to learn them. But the abilities that you get from factions are way more interesting. In order to obtain the best looking armor sets in the game, you will need to prove yourself to one of the factions. 
The game tries to explain this in the beginning, when you talk to the leader of the Berserkers, assuming you didn't skip the quest from Duress. Where can I buy armor like yours? Ha! <laughs> you can't simply buy a warlord's armor. You don't even have the rank of a cultivator, let alone that of a warrior. This is a common thing ever since Gothic 1, you really need to do a lot of things for a faction in order to get some high quality stuff. But what about the story and the setting of the game? Until the comet hit. The whole game is based around an alien element called Elex. The setting is post-apocalyptic, but it's really different from similar games. Those factions that I mentioned earlier all have their own ideas how to use this new element. Clerics are religious fanatics, and they're using Elex to fuel their technology, Berserkers refuse to use any form of technology, but they need Elex for using magic, and Outlaws are using it for drugs pretty much. However, I didn't talk about Alps, the fourth faction in the game. People in this faction are highly addicted to Elex, and they have to keep consuming it. You play as Jax, a former commander of Alps. While you were on a mission, your plane gets shot down, and you almost got killed by the guy named Kalax. When you regain your consciousness, Elex is gone from your system, and for the first time ever, Jack starts to feel real emotions. The Elex is gone from my system. I feel weak. I'll be honest here, the story didn't really grab me from the beginning, but it got really interesting later on. It starts off really slow actually, which is great, because you have more than enough time to absorb everything at your own pace. I wasn't a huge fan of Jax as a main character because he seemed really bland. The voice acting is pretty solid in general, but I really didn't like how Jax speaks. Someone tried to kill me. They stole my armor and my equipment. Then I find you here waiting to finish the job. Only to later realize that he's supposed to be talking like that. It makes perfect sense from the story perspective because he's learning how to control these new emotions. Emotions that were stripped down by abusing Elex for so long. But his behavior in general will seem more human as you play. And this will largely depend on the cold system. Almost every dialogue interaction that you have in this game will affect your cold level. I really don't want to spoil anything, but this will make sense when you get ready to finish the final chapter of the game. The story is pretty interesting and there is a massive cliffhanger at the end. You can finish the game in three different ways and your cold level will be the key factor here. But if the quest design wasn't so good, the story would suffer quite a bit. I made a video about one simple quest in the game that can be described as a fetch quest. Even though this is the case, the amount of options you have when you're solving this quest is truly impressive. I suggest watching this video if you're interested to see what I'm talking about. There are far better and more complex quest lines in the game, but this one won't spoil anything major. You always have multiple options while solving quests, which is nothing unusual when it comes to Piranha Bytes games. You'll find slightly hidden dialogue lines that will trigger certain quests or extra information about a particular quest. There are quests in the game that you don't need to trigger in order to finish them, which makes the world feel more alive. You also have a lot of available companions that you can recruit and each companion has their own unique story and questline. Your actions throughout the world will affect the relationship you have with them. And they have an impressive amount of lines for every quest, different locations and NPC interaction. Right from the beginning you will get your own camp and you can send all of your companions there. Now let's talk about the combat. Piranha Bytes was always kinda struggling with combat in their games. The combat in Elex reminds me a lot of Gothic 2 combat and I think it could have been a lot better with some tweaking and polishing. A lot of people had problems with how the combat in Elex works and I don't blame them. It can be extremely frustrating, especially in the beginning of the game. Auto lock on feature is on by default which makes the combat a lot worse in general. Some hitboxes are really bad, especially on a couple of specific monsters in the game. The stamina bar on NPCs doesn't seem to work properly, which makes some weapon effects useless. These are some notable problems, but the combat is still functional if you're willing to play by the rules. The core of this combat system is actually pretty good, but the execution needed a lot more polish. Your success in combat will depend on your stamina usage, how well you train your combos and your ability to evade and dodge at the right time. On my first playthrough I was playing with berserkers and I used a bow. When you learn how to dodge and evade properly, you can pretty much kill everything in the game with ease. But you'll need to buy a lot of arrows all the time or ammunition if you decide to use guns. Speaking about guns and bows, they all have three different shooting modes. 
when you learn scatter shot for the bow, you will improve your damage quite a lot, even when you use it on a single target, because you can hit one enemy with multiple arrows at once, if you're close enough to your target. I play this game a lot with two-handed weapons as well. You can easily stagger multiple opponents at once, when you connect a couple of hits. Getting a shield will also make your life a lot easier if you're struggling with combat. Feel free to check those old autistic guides if you decide to get this game, I have a bunch of them. There is nothing wrong with playing the game on easy if you're having a lot of problems in the beginning. Overall, the combat system is functional if you're willing to learn how it works or when it works. There are certainly a lot of problems with this combat system and I hope they will address them in the sequel. And for the end, we have the atmosphere and replay value. In one of my recent videos, I talked about how AI evolved in RPGs over the years. I mentioned how Gothic was probably the first 3D open world RPG with full NPC schedule. And even though this game is really outdated, it still manages to create a great atmosphere. Elix is no different when it comes to this, all NPCs have their daily schedules. NPCs will go to work in the morning, visit the tavern at night, then go to sleep. All beasts and animals are also sleeping at night and you can use that to your advantage. And this is one of those games that are not afraid of being really dark at nights. The lighting is amazing and it makes the graphics look much better in general. All of this combined creates a great atmosphere in the game. When it comes to replay value, this should be quite obvious. You would have to play through the game at least 3 times in order to experience all the major questlines. A normal playthrough should be around 50 to 60 hours, but if you want to see and do everything, you can easily spend more than 150 hours. And that will be all for this video. It should be enough to get you interested in the game, and like I said, I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to get at least some information about the sequel soon, so now it's probably the best time to revisit Elex. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. Special thanks to my Patreons and if you as well want to become one of them, all the links are in the description. Patreon is definitely the best place to directly support my work and every contribution is highly appreciated. That would be all and I'll see you in the next one.